Hey, 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 and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Evelyn Inc., but obviously you know that if you clicked on the video. I don't know why I say that. Anyway, if it's your first time here, welcome. I'm Evelyn, and we talk about all things self-care and living life with intention and finding your flavor and curating, not collecting your life. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're welcome to stay. And for those of you that have been rocking with me through all the years, through all the channel name changes, okay, through all of the things, then girl, welcome back. So today I wanted to kind of, I'm on my stool, y'all listen, I need a chair that has a back, I'm on this stool, but anyway, y'all don't care about that. So listen, so I wanted to talk about something called the broccoli factor. So let me give you a little bit of a backstory. Well, first, like this is under the whole theme of curated versus collected. And I've got two little kind of backstories on why I decided to do this video. So the first one is that, you know, that Patricia, aka Guys Design here on YouTube, and I have been doing live streams on her channel, on my channel. So if you have not subscribed to her channel, then you're probably missing out on some of the live streams and the replay. And then obviously make sure you have your notifications turned on on my channel so that you can also know when we go live over here. And so, you know, it's basically us bringing our our private girl talk conversation to the internet. And so it's been really, really fun. Like it's been good. Like we, we be talking about the things, okay? But one of the things that we were talking about that we haven't talked about on camera is this notion of like making stuff work. And back when I did my curated versus collected video, I kind of hit this angle of like, sometimes we just collect things, but we didn't select things. Like, let me say that one more time. Sometimes in life we collect things and we don't select things. And I'm not just talking about physical things like your clothes or your environment, whether it's beliefs, whether it's habits, whether it's lifestyles, whether it's the way we choose to approach situations. We didn't choose to be that way. We just fell into it or we just let it happen or we just let it be right and we kind of were like we're gonna make it work and so the whole idea of finding your flavor is about not making it work right is about picking what you desire whether it is the way you want to look whether it is your home who you want to be how you want to communicate how you want to take care of yourself in in multiple areas and then once you select that then making it work like then doing the work to sustain that and so we talked a lot about like you know sometimes you know i used to have the habit of when i went shopping i would go into the store and i would go straight to the sales rack or straight to the clearance rack and I, listen don't get me wrong i love a good deal like that's not what this is about i love a good deal but it was this notion of why did i go there first looking for things that obviously weren't selling or maybe weren't that cute but knowing well i have a knack for making it work right so that's the first i mean that's the that's the most recent thought but the reason why this video is called what's your broccoli factor or do you know your broccoli factor is because several years ago i was in the car with my mom i don't know if it was like mother's day or um her birthday or just our mother daughter time that we have and she was talking about how like she was like you know what i realized she was like i don't like raw broccoli in my salad and she was like all these years i've been trying to force myself to eat raw broccoli in my salad and the reality is I don't like raw broccoli. She was like, I like steamed broccoli and I don't mind steamed broccoli in a salad. I prefer it not in a salad, but I don't like raw broccoli at all at any time, nor do I like it in a salad. And she was like, I don't know why I've been forcing myself for years. Like I'm fully grown. So she she's grown, grown, right? She was like, I don't know why I've been forcing myself for years to try to like make myself like this when the reality is I just don't like it and I remember we ended up having a conversation like I wonder what area other areas of our life do we have a broccoli factor where it's like we're, we're trying to force ourselves to do the right thing we're trying to force ourselves to squeeze into a box or to like something or to be something or whatever the case may be and the reality is that's just not who we are and so one of the things that I think is super important is when you're trying to find your flavor in life and you're trying to be like, what is what is your unique way of being, way of living, way of doing things that is not borrowed from somebody else, that's not your shoulds and you're supposed to. It's like, what is that? And so a lot of times we don't know what our broccoli factor is. Or sometimes we may know what our broccoli factor is, but we don't know like what we actually like. And so like, it's this whole notion of a lot of people can tell you what they don't like, but they can't tell you what they like or what they want. They can tell you what they don't want, but they can't tell you what they actually want. 
And you can't, it's hard to get what you want if you don't know what you want, right? Because you, you can get a lot of things that, that, that are um, void or don't have the things that you don't like. That's great. But then you're going to be sifted through like, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. I just know I don't want this. And I think I've told this story before about, and I, I love this story because it's just, it's like the perfect example of like how we can live our life, right? And so here's the thing. So the story is I had a speaking engagement and I wanted a new dress, but I wasn't in the mood to drive all over the city and I didn't uh, have time to buy a dress online. And so my habit before that was to be like, I, I have this vision in my head and it's going to take me days and I got to drive all over to try to find this one special unicorn of a dress that I'm looking for. And I just wasn't available for that. That's a message. I just wasn't, I wasn't available for that. And so I sat before I got ready to leave and I was like, well, what do I want to wear? What do I want to look like at this speaking engagement? And so I decided that I wanted a, like a mauve pink dress. I wanted it to be a wrap dress. I wanted it to be in my size. I wanted it to be at a specific store and I didn't want to pay more than $50 at the time for the dress, right? And so I went to the store and I was like, bonus if I get a good parking spot, right? get to the store, park right up front, check. I walk into the store, I go to my size, I start sifting through the dresses. Lo and behold, I find a pink, like a mauve pink wrap dress in my size that's under $50, right? You would think that all I needed to do was to go to the dress room, try it on, make sure it fit and bought it and be on my way. But let me tell you what I do, and maybe you do this too if you think about outside the context of life. I then proceeded to grab a blue dress, a yellow dress, another dress in my size under the price point, but they weren't mauve pink, right? And so I'm headed to the dressing room with my four or five dresses, even though, remember, I didn't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this, right? So I'm headed to the dressing room with all of my dresses and I tried the pink dress on. It's bomb. I love it. But then I start trying on the other dresses and about two dresses in, I'm like, Evelyn, you said what you wanted was a pink mommy dress in your size that was a wrap dress under $50 at this store with a great parking spot. Did God not deliver? Okay. Like wh- what, why are you trying on the other dresses when you already made up your mind about what you wanted and what you, and what you didn't want? You didn't want to drive all the way around and you did know what you wanted. Why are you trying on these other dresses? And so in the middle of that, I just stopped. I just stopped and was like, you know what? Let me go buy my dress and be done. And so my point is, when it comes to your broccoli factor, it's equally as important to know what you don't want as to know what you want. Because I could have just said, I don't want to drive all over the city. I don't want to spend more than $50 and I don't want to park far away. But okay, but that left a myriad of things open. So whether it's you know, what kind of work you want to do, what kind of business you want to have, what kind of clients you want to work with, um, whether it's who you want to date or marry, whether it's, you know, how you want to take care of your body. Like, let me give you another example. I realized that my broccoli factor is I don't really like going to the gym. It's not that I don't like to move my body, right? But I don't like... I don't enjoy traditional exercise. And so I said, but I do want to move my body as part of uh, being healthy. I do want my body to have physical activity. And so I realized that my broccoli factor was, yes, I can do kettlebells and squats and lunges and burpees. I can do all of that. And when I'm in the moment, because the endorphins are going and the adrenaline is going, it's doable. Do I love it? No. But what I really love is to dance. What I really love is to hula hoop and to jump rope and to bike ride. And I'm really into this. Um, it's called what What I can't remember the acronym, but it's like non-exercise physical activity. It's kind of like burning calories by moving a lot throughout life. So I'll give you an example. When I used to teach cooking classes in person, it's about a two hour class, but the prep time before it 
is about two hours and the cleanup time after it is about two hours. So for about six hours, I'd be on my feet moving around, walking around the kitchen, doing dishes, teaching, cooking, whatever, right? And I would lose so much weight because for six hours I was moving around. I mean, I would even bust a sweat sometimes. And so that would be considered non-exercise physical activities, like when you're sweeping and mopping the floor or you're moving around. And so I realized I want to increase that in my life and also add in dance and hula hoop and jump rope and bike riding and things like that and I'm not really into treadmills ellipticals barbells I'm just not into it doesn't make it bad that's my flavor right that's my flavor and so just like I got clear on what my broccoli factor was I had to get clear on but what do I like because I was struggling and trying to force myself to go to the gym, pay the membership. And then I was like, well, maybe if I get in a small group class and pay more, and I just would never stick with it. And the reality was it was a broccoli factor that I felt somewhere I had collected the belief that I, that the only way to work out was to not enjoy it and that it had to be at a gym. And there's like so many different ways to move your body. You could swim, you could play tennis, you could do rugby, you could um, climb trees, like you could run marathons. There's so many different things that you could do. You could build houses. Listen, you can, like, like girl, you could do things to move your body that aren't necessarily go to the gym and be in a group class unless that's what you like so a little bit of a longer video um i have got some exciting news coming up um i am turning find your flavor into a course where you can actually go step by step to find your flavor in the 11 focus areas of your life and i think that what i or let me say this what i've experienced with talking with people over the years and just kind of looking at the world that we live in that people aren't living their life intentionally they're not in the driver's seat of their life or maybe they are in a few areas but not in multiple areas they don't know what their broccoli factor is they don't know what it is they like they don't know how they want to go and do it they don't even know what the 11 focus areas are that they should be paying attention to and what I found is when you become more intentional in those areas life gets really good like it gets so good so be on the lookout for that um if you want to email me to get on the um wait list to know when it's going to be available and all that is good but i've been holding this in for several years i've been tweaking it over time and i was like you know what i think now more than ever as our life has been disrupted and and this is we're about to enter into a new normal that i think it's more important now than ever to choose what that new normal is going to be for you versus letting other people tell you what that's going to be so anyway uh, i hope you enjoyed this video if you're not following me on instagram at the evelyn inc if you want to do that if you're so inclined i would love to connect with you over there and i'll see you in my next video peace